Hi, I'm going to show you how I use Quarto. And I use Quarto uh, in most presentations when I teach. And I'll first show you a presentation that uses both R and Python in the same uh, Quarto Markdown file. Uh, the link will be in the description too. I will show you how I convert it to a PDF using GitHub Actions. Uh, and link to that script is here too. I'll show it too. Um, then I'll show you a presentation that only uses Python, but I added more tuning to make it more readable on screen. And then I, um, and in this case, I used a script, a bash script, to convert it to PDF, and I'll show that too. So this will give you a good idea how I use Quarto. So let's take a look at the first presentation that uses both R and Python. I'll just go to the URL so you can, so you can see it here. You see that there's a start. Um, like I like to, like I use a BibTeX. Uh, let's do it here. Like I use BibTeX for a bibliography, so I can make references to the literature. And for the rest, it's uh, quite a markdown as you would expect. Um, let's take a look at some uh, where I do Python code. Yes, yeah, so here I have some Python code. Um, you can see that uh, here. Python code and in the same slide I have R code. So I'm going to show you how this looks like in R Studio. I use R Studio. Um, so so I use I I usually open it like this. I think it's TDD lecture dot Q. So I use R Markdown or R Studio to edit these files uh, because I feel that's the easiest way for me. And let's let's just click render. And now it gives my slides, and I use this also when when teaching. So uh, look at up. Uh, let's go. And so, so there's a lot of stuff, and let's take a look at the slide. So yeah, for example, here is a slide that uh, runs some code in Python, and here runs some code in R. Um, so the, the font is a bit smaller here. It was for an online course, so it doesn't need to be that big for a whiteboard. Um, yeah, and it looks uh, it looks qu quite nice. Also, there's a menu at the left hand side, with, which also breaks down everything. Um, so I really enjoy using uh, Quarto here to show my presentations in a browser. You can also make it full screen. I like to do that too. Tools full screen. Now you don't have all this nonsense around it, so you can really have a full screen presentation there. So for this course I use, I convert it to PDF using a script. So let's go back to my overview. So I've now showed you how I use Quarto Markdown uh, for my slides. I'll show you how to convert it to PDF using GitHub Actions. That is uh, I will use, just use standard things, so it's called a script that builds the PDFs, it runs every 16th date of the month, uh, it needs to set up some things, I just copy pasted this from stuff, uh, like installing Quarto, for example, that's a, just a Quarto action, so that, that there's also no need to do that. Um, and here I render exactly this lecture to a PDF, um, using this action. And I do this for all the lectures, so I didn't bother to put it in a for loop. Um, like each of these steps creates a PDF from a Quarto Markdown file, and then here there's also a trick to upload it, to upload all PDFs as an artifact. So take a look how that looks. Let's take a look if we can download the artifacts. Maybe it's already too late because these artifacts are only stored for some time. Yes, here we can find them. The artifacts are produced here and here we can download all presentations automatically. So that means if I update my slides and the PDFs will be automatically uh, created and uploaded here so I can send these to the students. Um, yeah, so this is how I convert my slides that use both R and Python to PDF using GitHub Actions. So now I'll show you a presentation with Python that had a bit more tuning. So maybe that's more interesting if you want to see how to make the font size bigger. 
Um, so let's go to there. So this is the folder, our studio, and then it's day three dot quarter markdown. So this is only Python. Still, I use our studio because I feel our studio is the nicest editor um, to do. But of course, you feel differently, and that's okay. So you had to have some some some. I had to do some tricks like that. There is a CSS file. Let's open that too if I can. Uh, styles dot CSS. Because I wanted to have a bigger font, so you can do that in this way, using the styles.css file. Yeah, just using a CSS file. Um, but you need to do that, and I wanted slide numbers, and I want my sections numbered, and I will again use uh, a bibliography. I want to use emojis. I use Python 3 for Jupyter. I want to use Reveal.js as a style for the slides. And when I render this, um, it will be a bit different. It will be very similar to the one I just showed you, except that there's that I put more effort in having big code. So, for example, here we see some code, and you see that the lines are a bit bigger. So here, for example, you see some reference to the literature. Um, here you see a list of references, and um, so what is the text is bigger, the code is bigger. Um, the quotes are bigger. A lot of things I've made bigger because this was needed for um, for presentation on a whiteboard with actual people. So I wanted it to be very readable, and hence the code is quite big. Um, and at the end, it gives an automatic list of references. So I didn't add this; it just adds it. Uh, it doesn't fit on one slide, but it adds it automatically. And also here. If, at the l if you go to tools, you can get the full screen thing. I really like that. Uh, but I use that uh, in teaching especially, uh, because this was on an actual presentation screen. And what I also like is I really took some effort more in making the content more... Um, like it automatically numbers the slide, and I never needed to do that. And I have a nice overview of what the, this day is about. So I put more effort in structuring uh, with the, structuring the content in headers and subheaders. Yeah, and it automatically numbers all the slides. It's, it's, it, was, it was great. It really works very nice. Um, so where can we find that presentation? Well, let's take a look at uh, well, so it's here. Let's take a look at how that looks like. Yeah, so here we have it. Um, yes, yeah, so for the slide numbering and the number of the sections, uh, setting that to true gives you all you want. And last but not least, this is how I render it. So it's just a, it's quite a simple Bash script in which I render my Quarto Markdown file to HTML, and I render it to a PDF, including a table of content. Uh, and those PDFs are quite. Um, so what I didn't get right yet is um, the, um, how these things actually look like. I didn't know. So so let's take a look at the PDF. You'll see what I mean. So it doesn't it doesn't convert it to slides. It really converts it to a to a document that you read at, that you read from top to bottom, and all slides are just pasted underneath each other. So I'm, what I like about this, it's more like the classical style of how you expect a document to be, but it's not the handout of the slides at all. Um, I did use this in Teach, and I think it's a fine format anyways, uh, but the, the big slides, like the slide by slide thing has been lost. For example, there's a question here and an answer there. Um, with, a, with having a new page, per having one page per slide, would be nicer because then the students can't read the answer when they're trying to do the question. But except for that, that was it's quite e it was quite easy to to render this because well you just use Quarto render to do this. All right, so this concludes my use of Quarto in which I write presentations. Uh, I made I use Quarto to make presentations with R and Python. I converted to PDF using GitHub Action. But I also made a presentation using only Python with with a bit more tuning, but it also would work for R.
and I would convert it to PDF using a script. So the links again are in the description of this video. I hope I've given you a good idea how you use Quarto. Um, yeah, it's just one of many. Um, enjoy! Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!